the three-team Julius Randle trade that would get New York Knicks to buy it. Okay. Well, let's look at the full trade scenario here. I really want to focus on what the Knicks get in this situation because, understandably, Julius Randle is a big piece of their offense. He's probably their second option. You know, he's a, I, without having the numbers in front of me, you know, a comfortable 17, 18, 19 points per game scorer. He's not incredibly efficient, and he's had he had a bad season a few seasons ago. Can't really knock down the three, but a big physical presence and can score it nicely on the inside. So the Knicks, and he's on a big contract, so the Knicks aren't going to give Julius Randle up for nothing. They're going to need to get some pieces in return. And we're looking at the Knicks getting Grant Williams and Nick Richards from the Hornets back. Now, of course, Grant Williams isn't a like for like replacement for Randall. He's a player. He's a player with who can play that three four position, um, similar to Randall. Decent on the ball, can can score the ball a bit. I think, obviously, if Grant Williams was to go to the Hornets, he'd probably uh, not go to the Hornets. Go to the Knicks. He would probably experience a bit more of the ball because um, the Knicks they're a better team than the Hornets. That's for sure. And if he's going to be a like for like replacement for Randall, he'll probably be looked to as the, you know, sort of maybe not the second option. I don't think he's good enough to be a second option, but a comfortable, a nice third option on offense. So I think we'd see, you know, where you've got Randall averaging 17, 18, 19 points per game. Grant Williams, I don't think he'd do that on the Knicks. I think we'd be looking more at anywhere between 12 to, to 15. Even, even 15, I think it's a bit higher, but. Grant Williams is a more than capable player. And I think if you're going in that direction, you know, it's good that you're moving on from Julius Randle because that's a different sort of player, a different sort of direction you're going in. In terms of the Hornets, they're getting Julius Randle, Jericho Sims. And Jericho Sims is a player I really like. Um, underrated, I think. Big physical presence. Um, there's a lot of that. It, it, there's, there's a bit of that in the league. There's not enough of it, but... It's a three-point shooting league, and he can't really knock down threes. But that being said, he's still got that big physical presence. And I'm sure I remember in his rookie season, he got like a big post to dunk. So he's got that in his bag. Uh, Corey Kispert, um, you know, one of these young players that from the draft that are supposed to be, you know, really be able to knock down the three ball. So if he goes to the Hornets, he could be a nice fit alongside um, Lamelo when Lamelo's you know, got a lot of gravity. And if Lamelo's getting hot and he's drawing that double team... And Corey's wide open. He can knock down that three. Marvin Bagley from the Wizards as well. MB3. Another, you know, big a big player who can stretch the floor as well. Can knock down threes. To be fair, Marvin Bagley would be a nice fit for New York if you're getting rid of Randall, to be fair. But, hey-ho. Um, looks like in this trade scenario, the Hornets are going to get MB3. And the Wizards will get Josh Green, Cody Martin, and then two first-round picks. I mean, you're getting Josh Green and Cody Martin. They're not going to be major players for you. Uh, Cody Martin will probably get a bit more bit more time, but not, th these players are basically going to be... I mean, depending on how the, the Wizards are looking like, I mean, the Wizards are quite a bad team. These guys might get some clock, but they're not really needle, needle movers. They're not going to do anything crazy for you. I mean, you're not going to get the playoffs with, with them you know, having major roles, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, but those two first round picks even though they're protected could potentially have some value particularly um, where you've got will the Wizards get their pick back from the Knicks and a Detroit Pistons pick which will probably be quite valuable as well because the Pistons are bad so really interesting so the Knicks will lose Julius Randle but they'll get Grant Williams and some trade exceptions um, Nick Richards as well who do you think, out of these three teams, where you've got the Knicks getting Grant Williams and Nick Richards, the Hornets get Julius Randle, Jericho Sims, Corey Kispert, and Marvin Bagley the third, and the Wizards get Josh Green, Cody Martin, and two 2025 protected first-round picks, who do you think really wins this trade? I'm, to be honest, I'm. I almost think the Hornets might win this trade because they've got, you know. Two really good players in Randall and Bagley that are going to be useful for them. Corey Kispert's going to be useful. Jericho Sims, whether you trade him or what you do with him, I don't know. Because um, 
Marvin Bagley the third and Jericho Sims they're both centres and out of the two I'm definitely picking Marvin Bagley but without seeing that contract in front of me I'm not sure what Marvin Bagley's contract even looks like is it a contract where he's only got one year left is it a big contract is it a small contract I, I don't really know but I'm inclined to say really the Hornets are, are the getting the best out of this to be honest but I'd be super curious to know what you guys think of um, this potential trade scenario and who do you think wins this trade scenario the Knicks the Hornets or the Wizards <laughs>